as the country comes out of lockdown, what's been happening to the under fives. At Kingsworthy Preschool on the outskirts of Winchester, only a handful of children have been able to return, to be cared for in small groups or bubbles. After more than two months without this kind of interaction, these three-year-olds are raring to go. <laughs> Education and childcare in the early years play a vital role in all children's development, but even more so for disadvantaged families. Around a quarter of the usual cohort at Kingsworthy are in that bracket. This place had offered to stay open for vulnerable children and the kids of key workers, in line with government guidance. But with no demand back in March, it shut down. Even before the pandemic, early years providers were struggling financially. Now they face an existential threat. This preschool may be a lifeline for many families, but coronavirus has blown a hole in its budgets and put the entire place at risk. Which means, at the end of this term, in just a few weeks' time, Kingsworthy Preschool may be shutting its doors for good. We are now in a much worse financial position than we were, um, and the financial position before wasn't very good either. We've lost one local preschool in the area this year, another went last year, and I don't know if we'll be able to open our doors in September. We haven't got parents paying fees this summer term. I can't set children up for September because we don't know where we are. What will that mean for families in this area? Well, especially the disadvantaged families, they won't have anywhere to go. Without good early years provision, disadvantaged children start school nearly a year behind their peers. But what's happening at Kingsworthy is being replicated across the country, according to a new report given to Newsnight by the Sutton Trust. The charity finds one third of providers in the most disadvantaged areas in England may be forced to shut permanently due to coronavirus-related financial problems and a quarter in the least deprived. At the height of the pandemic, two-thirds of settings were completely closed. Only 7% of under fives who usually attend were in some form of early years or childcare in England. The Sutton Trust is calling for an £88 million investment from the government in the sector to minimise the potential impact on young children. How important is it for this area to have somewhere like this? Immensely important. There are no others. You would have to travel. And it's affordable here. Victoria helps to care for her grandchildren. Leah used to go to Kingsworthy. Another, Eloise, who has cerebral palsy, now attends. She's absolutely blossomed under their care. So what's it been like not to have it through these last few months? It's been very tough. That's why I'm sure it has had an effect on her social um, development. Um, difficult. Almost half of parents across Britain reported lockdown had had a negative impact on their two- to four-year-olds in a poll by YouGov for the Sutton Trust. England's Children's Commissioner wants as many children back in early years provision as possible. Well, if you think with children, this is a, such a key stage of their development, and in essence, almost 10% you know, of their time before school has just been taken up with an extraordinary situation. That's something which could have a profound impact. It could have a profound impact in all aspects of development, in terms of their educational development, but also socially and emotionally. We need to make sure that those children aren't set back for the rest of their childhood. It's not just children who need support from places like Kingsworthy. Chris and Nikki have struggled with four kids at home and preschool closed. They're supportive for us as parents. You know, if you needed to talk, there's always a cup of coffee waiting for you and a biscuit. They can but, tell by your face as yeah. well. They're like, you're not OK, come and have a cup of tea. It's kind of, it's my crux. If I need anything um, or just to chat about the children and how I'm feeling and how I can cope, they're always there. So we, we support families with everything from cots to socks. About 40% of the families that come here don't have a safe place for their babies to sleep, so that's really important. At Little Village, a London-based charity for under fives, they've seen how the pandemic has tipped already struggling families over the edge. Demand increased by two-thirds in the first month of lockdown. Life in lockdown has not been easy for families when you're living in damp and cramped accommodation in single rooms, sharing, um, sharing kitchens and bathrooms and so on. Um, 
And I just, I, I know that the children we're supporting will be worse off at the end of this pandemic than they were before. We are on track to see double the number of children um, this year compared to 2019. And we're very, very concerned about what's going to happen as the job retention scheme winds down and finishes. It's felt like I'm living in a nightmare, to be completely honest. Ella May's twin daughters, Ruby and Bella, were born prematurely and have chronic lung disease. Like many families on a low income, they've found lockdown tough and have been helped by Little Village. Kind of a case of having some financial means to, to, to buy the products that we needed, but, but probably not enough money to buy enough product and the prices were going up. The girls usually attend a local creche, but that shut down and the family have been isolating inside their flat. Just before lockdown, they were kind of progressing onto the, the small words they were saying, and rather than kind of progress onto kind of full words, they just have remained stagnant and they haven't actually developed their language as, as, as much as I'd hoped they would have done by now. Do you have any sense why that might be? I strongly think it's because they're not around um, peers of their age group and they're not in, engaging in learning activities every day. It's a reminder of quite how much catching up the country's under fives may need. In normal times, Little Village welcomes struggling families in for play and counselling. Parents pick up what they need, volunteers pick up on any issues, including safeguarding. That vital role played by charities, nurseries and others has fallen away, which keeps many, including the Children's Commissioner, awake at night. Not only are vulnerable children becoming more vulnerable, but actually they're doing so at a time where there's less support around them. We know they won't have had contact face-to-face -face with health visitors, they won't have been into other kinds of provision. Effectively, a lot of them will have been invisible to the services. Now for those that are in fragile home environments where there's parents that have severe mental health conditions, where there's domestic violence in the house and where there's addictions to drug and alcohol, that's a very dangerous situation. The Sutton Trust says many disadvantaged families with under fives have dropped off the radar during lockdown and that's happened here at Kingsworthy. Some we haven't even heard from and we don't know how they are and a lot of our children who are in that safeguarding bracket haven't returned uh, for, ver for various reasons um, and especially if we're not here in September that takes away the option of them returning but if we're not here then who looks out for these children because there's no one else other than us. If more providers like Kingsworthy do have to close their doors so much is at stake for all families whatever their circumstances Parents need good quality settings to get them back to work as we come out of lockdown. And without them, there's a real risk that any progress being made by young children in their early years could be lost.